Seven one. <clears throat> Seven one. Slope fields and Euler's method. Example one. Solving a differential equation. Find all functions y that satisfy the derivative of some function is equal to secant squared x plus two x plus five. We have dy dx is equal to secant squared x plus 2x plus 5 and we can multiply both sides by dx. On the left side the dx is cancel and we get dy equals secant squared y plus 2x plus 5 dx. Now in order to find out what y is we can integrate both sides. Now the integral really of 1 dy is y. The derivative of y is 1 and that's equal to the tangent of x plus x squared and then plus 5x but because this is an indefinite integral we also have to have plus c. Example 2 solving an initial value problem. Find the particular solution to the equation dy dx equals this whose graph passes through the point 1 0. Well now we have dy is equal to e to the x minus 6x squared dx. So we multiply both sides by dx and on the left side the dx's cancel out. Then we integrate both sides to find the original function. That's y equals e to the x minus 2x to the third and then plus c. Well we're told that this function passes through the point 1 0. Let's plug 0 in for y and we'll plug 1 in for the x's. So we have e to the first minus 2 and then plus c. c now is equal to 2 minus e. The final answer is y equals e to the x minus 2x to the third and then uh, plus 2 minus e. Example 4 using the fundamental theorem to solve an initial value problem. Find the solution to the differential equation for which f of 7 is equal to 3. Well we have f of x is equal to the integral of e to the negative x squared. And then if we go from oh, uh, 7 to x, then when we plug th uh, 7 in we want the value to be 3. So we have plus 3. Example 6, constructing a slope field. Construct a slope field for the differential equation. The derivative is equal to the cosine of x. Now we could take the antiderivative of this and find out that the original function was actually sine of x, but what if we didn't know how to take the antiderivative? That doesn't mean that we can't get an idea of what the original function looks like. So imagine taking the cosine of 0. Well, the cosine of 0 is 1, so that means we'd have a little slope of 1 right where x is 0. Well, if we had, uh, if the original function was sine of x plus 1, then that would be up here. If it was sine of x plus 2, then we'd have a slope of 1 up here. So then, really what we're doing is we're plugging 0 in for cosine, but then taking care of all of the possibilities, at least where the integers are. Then we have the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. So right here at pi over 2, we would have a little slope of 0 uh, for the original function. Remember, this is the derivative of our original function. And then the cosine of pi is negative 1. So now we have slopes of negative 1. And at 3 pi over 2, we're back to zeros. Back to zeros. And at pi, uh, 2 pi, this would be 2 pi, we're back to slopes of 1. So no matter what the constant would be, the slope would be 1 at 2 pi. So look, now you just follow the slopes and we get an answer of, that's really the graph of sine. But we could have a whole bunch of different ones. Whoops, that would go down here. If we started here, it would go up, back down to 0, dip down in here. So we'd have a, a whole bunch of graphs of possibilities and all of which would have a derivative of cosine. Now here's a much nicer, uh, smoother one, but you can see there's a bunch of possibilities. 
Now if it was sine of x plus 1, then we would be looking at this curve right here. Matching slope fields with differential equations. Use slope analysis to match each of the following differential equations with one of the slope fields, a through d. Do not use your graphing calculator. Now what I do is I look for slopes of zero or slopes of undefined. Now for this one, when x is one and y is one, we'll have a slope of zero. When we have two and two, that'll be a slope of zero. So we're looking at one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, all to have slopes of zero. Well, this one doesn't look like it's it. This one definitely has some possibilities of the slope being zero. This one is ruled out, and I would say this one's ruled out. So it looks like one has to be letter B. Now for two, when x is zero, when we have zero times one, zero times two, zero times three, all of the slopes will be zero. Well, x is zero on the y-axis. So I'm looking for a y-axis with slopes of zero, and uh, uh, when x is zero, we'll have slopes of zero also. And that looks like uh, some, uh, let's see, does this look like it's leveling out? That could be a possibility. And it looks like this could be a possibility, but what about, uh, it doesn't look like I have slopes of zero uh, on the y-axis here. So this one has to be letter D. So I have letter B and I have letter D. Let's take a look at x over y. When x is zero, in other, on, other words, on the y-axis, uh, we're gonna have slopes of zero when x is zero. And when, we, when y is zero, in other words, on the x-axis, we should have vertical slopes. And that looks like letter A. So this one must be letter A. And if I, my process of elimination, I know this is C, but let's take a look at why it would be C. Uh, when Y is zero, in other words, on the X axis, all the slopes are gonna be zero. And then on the Y axis, when X is zero, we'll have zero in the denominator, and those should be vertical. So it looks like letter C on the X axis, they're horizontal, and on the y-axis, it looks like these are going to vertical.